let us now talk about delete operation on try. We are given a try and a word to be deleted from this try. We want to delete the word from this try. Let's consider this try that represents this dictionary. Bad, bad, cat, cut, geek, geeks and zoo. This is the try. And let's consider different cases of word deletions. Suppose I want to delete zoo from this try. What will happen in this try if I delete zoo? These three nodes are there only because of the word zoo. So all these three nodes will be deleted if you delete zoo. And the child reference or pointer corresponding to Z in this root will become null. These are the changes we want to make when you want to delete zoo from this try. Let's see another example, geek. So when you want to delete geek, what changes you will make? Please pause this video and think for a moment. You only need to mark this as false, right? Is end field for this particular node only needs to be changed from true to false. That's the only thing we need to do to delete geek. We cannot delete any node because these nodes are also used for other word, which is geeks present in the dictionary, right? We are only deleting geek. Let's now see bad. How do we delete bad? If you wish to delete bad, you only need to delete this particular node. You do not delete anything yet because BA are also used for this word BAT, which is present in the dictionary. Now, please pause this video and try to write down a program that takes a try as an argument and a string as an argument and deletes the string from this try. Let us now talk about try delete implementation. Try delete is very easy to write as a recursive code. To understand the recursive code, we are going to consider this try as an example. This try represents this dictionary. The words in this dictionary are an, and, and, bad, bat, and zoo. This is the try. Some nodes have is end as false, which means they are not end of a word. And some nodes have is end as true, which means they are end of a word. Let's consider the example of zoo to delete from this try. I've drawn partial try here to explain the zoo deletion. I have not drawn this part of the try. Let's see how does this delete code work. If you see the recursive functions, we take three parameters in these functions. The first one is root, which is going to change in the recursive calls. The second one is key to be deleted. This is not going to change in the recursive calls. The third parameter is index of key, which is i. We pass initially i as 0, right, in the recursive calls. Initially i is 0. And this i keeps on changing as we move ahead in the string. So we begin our execution with root node as this node and i as 0. We come inside this code. We check root is not null. Root has, root has address of this node. So we do not come inside this condition. Then we check is i equal to key dot length. What is key dot length here? Key dot length is 3. So i is not equal to key d dot length. Key dot length is 3 and i is 0. So we do not go inside this if condition. Now we find out the child node where we need to recursively call delete key function. How do we find out the child node? We go to this index i that we have passed as a parameter and we subtract the ask i value of a to find out the index of child. Right? We are assuming only 26 characters here again in the delete operation. We find out the index of that particular child and once we find out the index, we recursively call delete key for that child. So we are going to recursively call for this node. And this time we are going to pass i as i plus 1. So our i is going to be 1. Now we begin our execution for this node. Root is not null again. i is not key dot length. So we are going to again find out the index of the node for which we need to make a recursive call. This time we call for this node with i equal to 2. Again, root is not null, i is not key dot length. So we come to here and we find out index of the node for which we need to make a recursive call. So we make a recursive call for this node with i equal to 3. When we make a recursive call for this node, we again do not uh, go inside this if condition, but we go inside this condition because now i is equal to 3. So what do we do at this node? We simply mark its is end as false. We change it to false.
right? As soon as we come to this node. And after checking that, after marking is end as false, we check does this node contain any children? We call a function is empty for that purpose. Is empty function simply goes through the child array of size 26 and it returns false as soon as it finds a child which is not null. And if it finds that all the children have null values, all the children pointers or references are null values, it simply returns true. So for this node, is no is empty function is going to return true because it's an empty node. So is empty returns true here, and we were here in the execution for this node. So what do we do? We delete this node. In Java, we do not need to explicitly call delete, right? Because automatic garbage collection happens. So we get rid of this node and we return null to its parent, right? We return null null to its parent. Now the parent call, which was waiting for this child call to finish, gets the execution control back. And what it does, it assigns the returned value to its particular child pointer in C++ or child reference in Java. Right? It, it assigns this value here in, after it has made a recursive call. Right? It assigns the value here. After it has made the recursive call, it assigns the returned value to that child index. So it's going to mark this child as deleted and null. And after it has assigned the value, it's going to check for itself that do I have any more children? So this does not have any more children in case of zoo. So what it is going to do, it's going to delete itself again. In Java, we do not need to delete. We simply mark, need to mark root as null. So this node is also going to get deleted. And after this is deleted, it's going to return parent as null, right? After deletion marks the root as null and returns root. So it's going to return null to the parent. And what parent is going to do? It's going to mark this particular child's reference or pointer as null now. So this now does not contain any child. Since it does not contain any child, this is also going to get inside this is empty condition and it's going to delete itself and it's going to return null to the parent. Right? So it's going to get deleted and it's going to return null to its parent call. Right? And now control comes back to our main root, right? the function which was called for this root. And now checks, am I empty? This particular root is not empty. It has two, two more children. So it's not going to go inside this condition. It's simply going to return itself. Right? So it simply returns the root of the try, which it returns the original root of the try and deletion happened. Now zoo is not part of this try, only these two children are there. Let us now consider one more example to understand the delete key operation better. Let's say we want to delete this key an. So we call this function with i as 0 initially and we pass this node as a root node, our main root of the try. Right? I have again drawn a partial try here. Now you begin the execution from here and root is not null. So you do not go inside this condition and i is not equal to key length. Key length is 2 here. There are two characters in this word. So you do not go inside this if condition. You find out the child for which you want to make the recursive call using this ask i value subtraction. So we find out this child and we make a recursive call for this child with i equal to 1. So again this Recursive call begins execution from here and does not go any of the base cases. It comes here and finds out the child for which it needs to make a recursive call. For i equal to 2, it makes a recursive call, right? i equal to 2 and this node as the given node. Now, when this recursive call is made, your i is equal to the key length 2. So you fall into this if condition. Now, what do you do? You simply mark end of word for this particular node as false as the first thing. Now you check, is this empty? This is not empty. It has two children, right? So you do not go inside this if condition. You simply return address or reference of this node to the parent. Parent gets this return value and assigns this value to that particular child index. So what the parent is going to do, it's going to overwrite the same reference or pointer, right? Earlier also it was reference or pointer to this node. Now it's going to override the same returned reference or pointer. So once the parent call is over, it's going to give the control back to its parent and 
it's also going to return root or or itself to the parent, right? The same node is going to be returned to the parent. And parent is also over going to override the same pointer or reference. And then it's going to return to its parent and you've deleted an. We basically did not delete any node. We simply marked this as false in our recursive function. Let us now talk about time complexity of try delete operation. Let the key length be n, length of the key that we want to delete. And try delete is going to take big O of n time. What try delete does, it begins from the root, right? And let's say the key that you want to delete is zoo. So it traverses for every character and makes a recursive call for every character, right? So it makes these many recursive calls. And in every recursive call, it does some constant amount of work. All the work that we are doing inside a recursive call is constant, right? Except the recursive call itself. So for every character, we are doing constant work. Therefore, the overall time complexity for this key delete is big O of n, where n is the key length.